destroyed everything. All right, guys, we are back in Dom and Events. Uh, I did that again. We're back in JavaScript doing Dom and Events. Ooh, this is a, a long one. So, um, I am. This is something I expect to actually learn quite a bit about. So we might slow down for a second. So the DOM refers to the uh, document object model, which is basically the structure of HTML and how things work within it. So you see a nice little thing here, the document that outputs the HTML. You have the head, the title, all that sort of stuff. So it's the document object model. Cool. Uh, the DOM tree, as we just saw here. Uh, has what you can call child nodes and siblings. It's kind of a tree, so you can imagine what will link to what. So the following HTML element is the parent of H1. So the parent would be body, because all these are nested within it. No? Really? Did I misunderstand? Body has two children, one parent. One second. I think I made a, a grave misunderstanding. So let's check this out. So HTML has two children, head and body, which makes sense. And then, uh, oh, whoops, because the paragraph is nested between it. So it's paragraph. Sorry, guys. Just a little bit of a brain fart. Um, document object, the inner.html refers to uh, that almost all, uh, the inner, pro inner HTML property can be used on almost all HTML elements to change the content. So basically, uh, they will be added to, uh, you can change the value, like the text value, uh, using inner.html. Um, Select all that play. The document object is the root of the DOM. Inner.html is a method. Body is inner. It's, I think it's considered a property. There we go. Yep. Um, selecting elements. So elements, you have ID, you have uh, class names, and you have tag names, right? So let's go ahead and continue on. So fill in the blanks is set the element and change the content to high. So we have a variable in our JavaScript we're setting here, and we want to select the element ID, which is equal to text, and we want to say uh, ob.innerHTML equals to high. So you can kind of see how you would link things via, via by tags and things like that. Get elements by class name. So you can do that by more than just a single tag at a time. You can do it by entire class names as well. So in this case, fill in the blanks, select all div elements, and it can go for any tags, right? So we want to select all the divs, and we then want to alert the content of the third div. So we want to select the third div, which would be index two, and output whatever it is. That inner.html again gets the text. Can a node in the DOM have multiple parent nodes? Can the node in the DOM have multiple parent nodes? I don't believe. I are they still considered parents? Are there multiple levels? If so, yes. All right, then it's no. So let's go back and read this real quick. All right, so there's only one parent node, and they have previous sibling, next sibling. Okay, there we go. That makes sense. Changing elements. Get elements by tagging. Fill in the blanks to select all images on the page. So we're going to select IMG and change their SRC attribute. So we want it to be the uh, iterate through the for loop. And these are great examples of things you may do. Granted, you probably won't do anything in vanilla JavaScript anymore. You'll probably be doing it in Angular. Or react but uh, you know it all helps um, and then go ahead and set the value there cool changing style you can do that with uh, by calling dot style so you're calling this tag for this item that you grabbed so let's go ahead and change the background color of all span elements so we select a span and then we can say for that span uh, 
on uh, each element, we'll pass an X here, go ahead and change the background color. Cool. Adding and removing elements. Create text to node. So you select the text around this. Now this is something I haven't used before. Create clones an element and returns the resulting node, creates an element and create text node. So this creates a new paragraph and adds it to the existing thing. So here we append a child. Here we create one. So basically we're creating the HTML content and then we're appending it. Okay, that makes sense. So fill in the blanks, add a new li uh, element to the unordered list with ID list. So document dot uh, get element by ID. And then we want to create the list element. And then we want to go ahead and append it. What? Let's look at this one more time. Fill in the blanks to add a new li element. So we want to create we get we create this we append this let's see here document dot add new element to the unordered list with the id list document dot get element by id oh this is by id no that's not right ul dot append child so that goes there so this creates it. This is what I did last time. No way this, yeah, this doesn't work. I don't know what I'm doing. Fill in the blanks, add new ally on. All right, so we got, let's look back real quick. So adding and removing elements. So did we do this one? No, it's the same one. All right, so let's review, right? So create text node. You create an element, then you append the child Oh, I think I was creating in the wrong way. So you want to create the element, the li, because we're appending the li. So you have to create it first. Ah, I get it. I get it. So I thought we had to, we were actually trying to get the list item first. Uh, okay. Uh, and then we want to get the element by ID. We want to get the list that we're trying to target, and then we want to append to that list. Got it. Got it. That makes sense. Uh, removing elements. It looks like you can probably just remove it if you get the element by ID. So um we want to document in our document we want to uh, remove the child of uh fill in the blanks remove the node element from the page par is nodes parent so remove the node element so we not we don't want to remove so we get element by id node we want to remove element from Page. Parse the nodes parent. Yeah, there we go. No, 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 no. Document dot remove child from node. What? Fill in the blanks to remove the node element from. Oh, oh, I see, I see, I see. So we uh, we already did our document. So we have to target the node, and then we want to say, look, parse the nodes parent. Remove child. No dot. Wait. No. One second. I'm getting confused here. Remove the child. Which one's the parent? So par, par. Remove the node element from the page. So I believe here we go. Par is the parent, and there we go. And node is the child. Okay. Replacing elements. You can also replace the child. Which ones are used to replace nodes? I guess replace child works for everything. Let's see here. Okay, it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, it's all replace child. That makes sense. I guess. I guess you wouldn't want to just re uh, replace a child or a parent. Creating animations. Uh, animations is something that I am uh, horribly bad with and I need a better understanding. To create an animation relative to the container, the position attributes must be set to relative. That makes sense. Um, set interval is how often that animation runs, or how often something runs, right? So if it has 10, 
1,000, it's 10 seconds. Every 1,000 milliseconds is a second. So the following code defines timer that calls move every 10 milliseconds. However, this makes our box move to the right forever. Because we want that to end, we then would have clear interval which stops the set interval function. So, cool. So to, set, to stop a set interval, you have to clear it. Handling events. So events, these are things that are you'll use like ng click or ng change on uh, in Angular. So the type of function that executes events is called an event handler. So what handles your event? The event handler. Handling events, you can call functions. You can do other things as well. So button, call func when button is clicked. So we have on click, and then we want to call the func func. So oops, let's spell this right. So on click, go forward. So on load, similar, window dot on load. Uh, these can be used to do something. Okay. Uh, fill in the blanks to call the clear function after the body is loaded. So on load, clear it. And let's, let's see if we can get this one without doing this. Can multiple event handlers be added to a single element? In Angular, they can. So I'd imagine they would be able to in JavaScript, vanilla JavaScript. Cool. Event propagation. A paragraph is inside. All right, let's let's, let's read this real quick. There are two ways of event propagation and propagation and. HTML DOM, bubbling and capturing. Event propagation allows for the definition of element order when an event occurs. If you have a P element inside a div element, then the user clicks the P element, which elements click should be handled first. In bubbling, the innermost element is handled first and the outermost element is handled second. In capturing, um, the outermost element is handled first and then are, okay. Uh, paragraph is inside a div element. You want the paragraph's click event to be handled first. You should use uh, bubbling, I believe it was. And then uh, you can set that here. Click my function true will be uh, capturing. Um, so click, and then we want to set it to true if we wanted to use capturing propagation. Cool. I didn't know that. I'm gonna have to look into that a little bit more. So image slider, you can create a simple image slider. Let's see what it has here. We have an array of images, array of uh, image locations. So fill in the blanks to define an array. So we have R, R, and then we have our brackets like so. Pretty cool. And then uh, let's continue on here. What will be the context of the paragraph after a user clicks twice? So if the user on click clicks test, Test set gets the element of text, which is 20, or get element by ID, which is right here. And then we get the value here, which is 20. We divide it by 2, that's 10. Then we divide it by one more time, by 2, that's 5. Cool. Form validation, oh my goodness. There's a lot of stuff going on in forms, and I can tell you right now that one page is not good enough. There we go. All right, module seven quiz, seven questions. They a lot of stuff in here. Uh, a lot of a little more technical stuff that I kind of am guilty of breezing over in my in my JavaScript stuff. Uh, maybe becoming too framework dependent, but we'll see. Uh, so fill in the blanks to change the content of all the paragraph tags of the page of solo learn. So we want to set that to P and we want to say document. So get all the paragraphs, document get all elements by tag by ID, and we want to go ahead and set that value to solo learn. Cool. What is the output of this code? Uh, get the element by ID test, and alert uh, has child has nodes, and that will be true because there is a paragraph. And then fill in the blanks, change color paragraph with ID two to red. So document dot, uh, get element by ID P2. And then we want to say d dot style dot text color equals red. There we go. Wait a second. Fill in the blanks to change the color. 
of the paragraph with ID 2. So documents.getElement by ID P2. And then that's color, or style, and then color. Whoops. So there's no such thing as text color. It's color. Uh, can you handle multiple events the same HTML? Yes. And fill in the blanks to alert a message when the button is clicked. So uh, button on click, display a message, and then a function, define the function in your JavaScript, and wham, bam. Uh, display alert when the mouse pointer is over the div tag. I believe that's uh, hover. Is it hover? Doesn't look like hover. Uh, div. I don't remember what that is. So let's let's look it up real quick. Um, hover. Uh, JavaScript event handler. On mouse over. That's what it's called. It's on mouse over. Did a little bit cheating there, boys. Nice. So, um, that was fun. Uh, we got our little certificate. Uh... We can go ahead and add it to our page if we want. We go to add in. This is kind of the fun part. But as always, guys, um, add it to your LinkedIn portfolio. But as always, guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and share. And look forward to our weekly videos on Friday mornings behind the code where you interview developers, designers, tech professionals, and talk about everything you needed to know when trying to get your foot in the door and lots of other great knowledge as well it's our interview slash podcast series i look it's the future of the channel i'm very excited about it thank you for the support and i'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching special thanks to our sponsor dev mountain if you're interested in a coding boot camp why don't you check them out where they include housing alongside their tuition so you can get up go and immerse yourself in the environment and if you want to support me go over to patreon.com slash coding tutorials 360 so we can put out more content thanks for watching